Hello, welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. If you were to ask almost anyone living in the area from Mexico to Argentina to name the most feared animal in the Western Hemisphere, they'd be sure to say El Tigre. El Tigre is the jaguar of tropical America. Our adventure with him proved to Jim and me that he really is one of the most powerful and deadly cats in the world. And he's as cunning as he is deadly. About the only way that he can be tricked, as far as I know, is with this. A jaguar can't resist coming to investigate an imitation of his own call. This collar and a tough nylon net came in very handy when Jim and I were asked to help trap a cattle-killing jaguar on a ranch in northern Mexico. It was very rough country, and the only way we could find the killer was on horseback. Just ahead is a low-lying rocky area, an ideal hiding place for the big cat. Entering the area along a dried up riverbed, we make our first discovery, drag marks, made by a big animal dragging its smaller prey. A quick look confirms it's a jaguar, all right, and a big one, too. But where could it have taken its kill? Up there's a likely spot. No sense risking the horses. Better to explore the danger area on foot. We're in luck. It's El Tigre. She's returned to check on her kill. A goat. Only African lions and Asian tigers are larger cats than the jaguars. This female has magnificent markings and must weigh at least 150 pounds. Jim thinks she's acting strangely, but before we can find a reason, an intruder appears, a coyote who's picked up the scent of the kill. Big Cat doesn't know that her lair's been invaded. But now she does. He was telling everyone that this is his carcass. And that was a mistake. The coyote better get going fast. No one, least of all a coyote, steals food from the ruler of this country, El Tigre. Then we really got a surprise. Higher up the hillside, a baby jaguar. The female has a kitten. It's about three months old. This explains a lot of things, especially why the mother turned to killing livestock. In this area, there are few wild animals to feed on, so she's been forced to kill domestic stock to feed her youngster. He's a cute little cub and can't seem to stay still for long. Like all youngsters, he likes to play.
This is all very entertaining, but it puts us in a tough spot. Catching a jaguar alive is dangerous enough, but a female with young is doubly dangerous. To catch them together without harming them is going to be almost impossible. A sharp warning from mother. The game's gone long enough. Time to get some rest. And time for us to return to camp to decide how to catch the female jaguar with young. No time to lose. The big cat could decide to move, and it'll be tough to find her again in this rocky country. We do have one big advantage. Waiting in camp with his dogs is John Lilly, one of the world's experts on catching big cats. These are some of the best cat hunting dogs in the country. The trouble is, if we let them go after the jaguar now, they'll most certainly kill the cub. And we can't have that. We'll have to catch the cub first. In any case, no matter how we decide to catch El Tigre, we're going to have a real battle on our hands. After discovering the jaguar's lair and finding the young cub, we spent a long time in camp getting ready for the tricky and dangerous job of capturing them unharmed. Time to hit the trail. This is going to be a long, tough day. Jim and I must get back to the jaguar's lair quickly to make sure she hasn't moved. John Lilly will follow with his dogs. Maggie, who's part blue tick. Big Red, the bloodhound and a great tracker. And Old Smokey, part Rhodesian Ridgeback and all fighter. Last, our Jaguar collar, a gourd with hide stretched across one end and inside a thong attached to the hide. A strange instrument but it may decoy the mother away from her cub. This is as close as we dare get. We can't see from here if the jaguar is still in her lair. So Jim will work in close and radio back if she's there. He'll have to be careful because he's unarmed and El Tigre is America's most powerful and cunning killer cat. It's too risky to take the horse any closer. I'll have to go the rest of the way on foot and move carefully. I get into a good position to scan the rocks and check things out, just as John and the dogs arrive at Marlin's location. It's vital to our whole plan of capture that they make no move until they get my signal. After searching the entire area, I see that the kitten is in the lair. But where's its mother? If I go in to grab the cub, the adult jaguar might suddenly return. To be on the safe side, we'd better wait until she comes back. Another complication, a Quatamundi approaching the lair. The Quati is related to our raccoon and is a bright, inquisitive animal. I'd better warn Marlon and John to sit tight for a while. We don't dare call the female until we know where she is. Meanwhile, It'll be most interesting to see how the Quatamundi and the little cub react when they come face to face. Especially when the baby's finishing off a piece of the kill. Quatis will eat just about everything, and he'd like some meat. 
But first, he's going to investigate before making his move. Cub challenges the quantity, but that shouldn't drive him off. Then I see the real reason. The female jaguar has returned. The mother appears calm and doesn't suspect that I'm near. The only way to catch the cub unharmed is to call the mother away. Okay, Marlon, go ahead. Right, Jim. We're ready to call the mother. Hopefully, she'll respond to our jaguar caller and leave her cub. she react? Did it really work? It certainly did. Whether it imitates a territorial or a mating call, Nobody knows for sure. All we do know is it works. A quick word to alert Jim that she's moving farther away from the area of the lair. Hello, Jim. She's well away now. Okay, Marlon. Now to grab the cub before mother changes her mind. He's quite a fighter. This will take some strategy. I've caught a real El Tigre by the tail. And like a tiger, he keeps fighting. He can be carried back to camp in this sack, which allows him to breathe freely. Catching his mother unharmed won't be as easy. With the jaguar cub safely caught, John gives his dogs the big cat's scent. Away they go. And we're after them, hot on the trail of El Tigre. As we followed the baying hounds hot on the trail of the jaguar, none of us realized we were starting one of the most exciting chases of our lives. With the cub safely in camp, Jim hurries to join us in the foothills where El Tigre makes her first stand. She's not frightened of the dogs and could kill them, if she could catch them. It's clear all these dogs are well trained. It takes teamwork and nerve to get this close to a deadly jaguar. The 
dog's constant barking is annoying the cat. There they go. We mustn't lose them. The pace of the chase is amazingly fast. Almost from the beginning, we've been so close that the hounds have always been able to see their quarry. Now, by pressing and giving her no time to relax, they can tire and maybe even corner her. Only then can we begin our capture. The cat pauses to catch her breath, but John's dogs won't give her a moment's peace. We no sooner catch up with them, and they're off again. Up to now, the advantage has been with the cat who knows the territory and seems headed in a definite direction. If the blistering pace and the boiling sun is tiring the hunted, it's also taking its toll on the hunters. Then she makes her first mistake. <laughs> The dogs almost get her. We're right behind, and now we have the advantage. On the defensive, cat-like, she instinctively seeks the heights, a narrow ledge, but she can't retreat. The dogs have done their job. They cornered El Tigre. It's up to us to capture her unharmed. Jim has been carrying a special net. We'll need it, and John will need his lariat. The dogs are still keeping the jaguars back to the wall. Our best plan is for John to climb the rock above and try lassoing the cat. The noisy dogs keep the jaguar so busy she never hears John as he creeps carefully over the rocks and into position. Our hounds keep the pressure on the cat as John tries again. Got her! A hundred and fifty pounds of fighting, spitting, fury on the line. John Lilly keeps the lariat taut allowing us to grab the dogs who could injure the jaguar while she's defenseless. Pulling off hunting dogs who got their victim licked isn't easy, but Jim and I managed to get them all chained. Now for the difficult part. Our jaguar is roped, but she isn't captured yet. John must pull and lift her while we slide the capture net underneath. Only then can he lower the rope, which is around one shoulder and leg, not just her neck. Now the biggest fight of all starts. Trying to tangle her in the nylon net is difficult. 
Despite all our efforts, she almost fights free. When it seems she's finally entangled, she breaks out. Only by grabbing rope and throwing net can we stop her. She quiets down and we start moving her. But that was just the quiet before the storm. Now the battle's almost over. I must contact our base camp, leaving Jim to hold on to our prize. Soon she'll be joining her cub and both will be moved to a new territory. For that we'll need reinforcements, who are standing by waiting for the good news that we've captured El Tigre alive and unharmed. The Jaguar call, the net and the dogs did their jobs well. Now it was our job to release the mother jaguar and her cub into their new home. We picked a site along a river where there was a permanent water supply. Now man's livestock and man's guns are far away. Here the jaguars will be free for the rest of their lives to hunt their natural prey and to roam at will in the wild kingdom.